Alright, so hello viewers and welcome to Runers. I'm your host, PBG2, and welcome back to another Let's Try video. Today we're checking out a game released uh, in early September. Runers here is a, it's a, it's said to be a dungeon uh, roguelike shooter, if you will. So it's a, it's a bullet storm game in the sense that you go around, you, uh, you try to, you try to get your highest score will reach the highest floor inside this randomly uh, generated dungeon here. But the main focus of the game is just the sheer amount of uh, things that you can combine inside the game in the sense that you uh, you you combine runes to make spells. And as you can see, there's uh, 285 spells inside the game. There's also a wide variety of different um, traits and perks, if you will, there. And a whole just just a whole bunch of different options for you to customize um, how you uh, how you run through the game, which just makes it absolutely fascinating. So, um, this is a game that, as you can see here, probably coming off of uh, the challenges and achievements that I've completed. I mean, it, it's not something that I've played a lot of, though nevertheless, I find it extremely fascinating. And with that said, let's begin a new adventure. Let's start up a regular game, and let's just see how far we can go here inside this Let's Try. So, um, starting off, like I said, I mean, a ton of choices. There's a whole bunch of passive abilities we can take on for our guy. Um, each, uh, every, or each and every single one of the, uh, the people that you control inside the game has a class or you know well actually you just control one guy but you um, but you have multiple playthroughs right so um, your, your person will always have a special ability he can carry up to I believe four spells though you can only use two of them at one time because there's quite a hefty uh, changeover in 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 switching your spells in and out there and uh, with that said I mean I figured we just take a look at some of these abilities here and uh, pick them out and uh, really just go with them we're actually I don't believe that the inventory thing is actually correct. You could you can have four different abilities uh, equipped in the sense that you can use them at one time. Though two of them will always be on like awkward buttons. So um, typically you want uh, yeah just two on your left and right mouse, and you have like I think it's like a four by four inventory. Anyhow, minor detail. So um, checking out the classes and passive abilities here. What I figured I'd do here is that I just tab through each one for the people who want to uh, perhaps pause the video and uh, read these uh, little brackets and all of that but for those who do not want to do that um, we might as well just check out a few neat ones for class and passive abilities um, the ones that I've played with are the uh, starting off with the classes I played with the Paladin here with the soldier with the duelist and this guy the spirit keeper kind of looks like the uh, he kind of looks like you know Gandalf or the, the 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 keeper of the light from Dota 2 and anyhow he's really neat he can uh, re release eight of these decoy things which def which will draw attention from you and uh, hopefully distract the enemies long enough for you to knock them out so he's quite useful um, like I said I've played with uh, these three other ones over here the duelist has this uh, blade storm attack so he charges an enemy spins along the way and does a whole bunch of area of effect damage like that. Um, the soldier is more so of a blunt version of him. He charges at an enemy, dealing high damage to whoever he comes in contact with. Uh, the paladin over here can reflect damage for a limited amount of time. So that is also quite neat, and the rest I've um, just kind of uh, shoved off for later, really. So there's that, but I'm sure that they also have quite uh, quite the various, uh, well, well, roles and different playstyles there. So, um, likewise, I mean, passive abilities also have uh, some very, very uh, intriguing ones here as well. Um, some of these will, of, will, of course, be a little bit more generic, such as uh, the Blessing of the Human one over here, which just adds to stats. And, uh, well... The two ones that I've I've played around with so far are these two, the Curse of the Shade, which will make it so that every 15 seconds you'll you shoot a bullet in a random direction that does some damage that uh, scales up. But um, I think the one that we'll go with today is this one right here, the Curse of the Vampire. So um, it's a it's a game that works off of the off of a similar system, like say um, it, it's a room based system, it's a room and floor based system. So I mean that's that's something fairly common in roguelikes, and with this uh, vampire ability, what will happen is that we gradually become stronger the more areas uh, we, we we explore. Though in certain conditions, uh, it might uh, yeah it might lower our abilities too as well. So I think it's pretty neat. I think we'll just lock that in. And for our starting spell, we have a we have a starting choice of I believe. Uh, let's see. There's there's uh, right around ten here. I'm gonna go with the spark because it's my favorite. But I mean either way, during our playthrough here, we're going to pick up so many of those different abilities uh, that the first initial bunch shouldn't uh, shouldn't be a big issue. 
So anyhow, very basic, uh, yeah, controls, you know, WASD to move your guy, a few casting splots, uh, a class ability, um, you have ability to pause the game, and amongst other things, and that's pretty much it. So, um, talking a little bit more about the floor system, and I can close this big menu and uh, open it if you guys want. Um, how these roguelike games, I mean, Dungeons of Dreadmore, NetHack, and all work off of the system, I'm not actually terribly sure about NetHack, but... Um, uh, at least I remember it doing it. Like, I could be wrong about it, but uh, they work off of the system where you have different little rooms set up, and uh, well, you can open them and close them in general. Inside them will be more enemies or less, or enemies or just in general things there. Um, the games do them differently. For example, in this one, you can't move back after you uh, you go into a room with enemies. I think in Dungeons Dreadmore, you just have to open the doors, is the thing. And net uh, net hack. I mean, honestly, I don't really remember at this point. So um, it's 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 a Quite, it's, it's, it's quite a fast-paced game, and the, the game developer here throws quite a few different things into the mix. As you may have noticed there, for a period of time, I had two crosshairs there, and that's because one of the things that, uh, well, one of the things available to us is uh, is one of those distractor enemies, which will put up one of those, possibly uh, obscuring our aim, but since this is, you know, floor number one, it's, uh, it's not that bad. Once you get into the higher uh, floors where you have just an absolute ton of enemies, that is definitely very, very troublesome. So, um, we've already f figured out where to go at the very end of things. So I think we'll just stay on floor number one. As some of you guys may have noticed, there was a staircase inside that room, which will take you to, a next, uh, to the next floor. And how those work is that uh, each floor is progressively harder, though of course will generate you uh, more points and lead to bigger rewards there. Um, so I think, yeah, we'll just stay here. We'll try to pick up some loot for now. And afterwards, we'll go over there. Um, checking out some of the other stuff about the uh, the game over here inside. If I pause it, yeah, I can pause the game. And this is helpful because I can read certain bits about the enemies and stuff because those are also uh, quite different, quite unique. Um, yeah, we can talk. We can we can see this uh, this power state thing as well. So we get a lot of different buffs due to the fact that we've uh, chosen the vampire uh, the yeah the vampire trait there. So that's also one thing. And in addition, I mean, clearing these rooms will help us out on that note, so we might as well. Ooh, and would you look at that? There's a glowing enemy on this level, or this, uh, this room. So this thing over here should have, uh, it's, it, it should be a slightly stronger enemy. Though it should have some good drops for us, or at least a chance to grab some good drops. And would you look at that? It dropped another one of these runes. It dropped a shock rune, so that'll be, uh... That'll be useful in, inside the immediate future, once we uh, clear out this bunch. We'll see what that does, or you know, what we can use it for slightly. Because then again, I mean combining things. Ah, I just couldn't get that large beetle for the longest time there. Uh, but what was I saying? Yeah, a lot of the, a lot of the game elements are of course based upon combining things and... Uh, yeah, making new spells, or alternatively, upgrading your current ones. Zap that, grab the health. Come over here, is that that, and the boulder over here. These guys just, uh, these beetles don't seem to chase after you, unless you attack them, that is. They seem to be just follow the edge of the map. Right, so uh, taking a look at the inventory here, what you can do is that you can combine various different runes to make your spells and abilities uh, more effective. So how this works is that you can combine three different runes at uh, at one time at the very most, though you need one of these combiner things. These two, this is a double one, this is a triple one. Um, accordingly, you know, they uh, they limit you to, you know, double, double combine combinations and triple combinations. And uh, well, what you can also do with these runes is that you can also upgrade your spells with them and typically if um, once you get into like the uh, like like really really heavily combined spells what will happen is that um, as you see here in addition to just plainly upgrading whatever um, base stat the the uh, the the spell has it'll also upgrade certain factors about it so for example currently I have uh, that spark ability it's not exactly terribly damaging though it is uh, it fires very fast and I would like it to do more damage right now so what I think I'll do is that I'll actually upgrade it just slightly and what I can do there is that I can just use one of those runes to do that but later on I'll see what we can do about combining some of them and uh, making some new spells there Ooh, would you look at that an empty room We'll just clear all of these things, and you can level up inside this game, and once you level up you can get some perks, and it'll also allow you to do some neat things. you see that shortly, but it looks like there's a specialty room down here. 
And would you look at that? That is a lot of enemies. Let's see what the specialty things are inside this room. This room apparently increases cooldowns, so we won't be able to fire as fast. And yes, this, uh, yeah, this uh, this confused about aiming thing, these floating clowns with floating brains as a cause, it does that. So get rid of that right away. We can also, uh, I believe, open up this beastie Terry to check out these different enemies. And these are, yeah. Um, they usually have something special about them. I actually haven't seen these zombie ones yet, or at least I don't believe so. Ooh, it looks like they have a really fast movement speed when they're uh, when they're angered over here. Luckily, we can keep them busy like this. But as you can see, I mean, this will be uh, quite a big problem depending on depending on the room layout and, of course. Uh, where you want to take that fight. There you go, so we got rid of one of those, uh, these are, I believe, like, water mages, so, you know, water wizards there. So there's that, and would you look at that, so that is also gone. Um, let's break this, break that, nothing inside these, so let's go down here, see what's up. And there's another one of those glowing things. Alright. Oh, I see, these, these little gate things, where these, um, pillars, if you will. They grant certain buffs inside this zone. It looks like this one had in increased movement speed. They can vary by quite a bit. Oh, would you look at that? That is a double combiner. So now, we can make a spell out of that. And I'm going to do that momentarily, of course, as once we uh, once we clear out these guys. So there we go. Got rid of them, got rid of that, and there we go. So yeah, we have a double combiner. We have a air rune of wonder. So these can uh, these runes can have other things uh, about them. And what we can do now is that we can use that double combiner. We can use it with these two runes. So we can combine to make a new storm uh, to make a new spell here. And it so happens that we made sandstorm. So this is a uh, it has a cooldown 2.5 seconds. It apparently lasts for five seconds, and it uh, yeah it creates a slow moving sandstorm that does damage to enemies and also does increase damage to destructibles so it'll be quite useful for, uh, for why well, I would imagine it to be quite useful on these just rocks and stuff which again have the chance to give us items here so that's quite neat and uh, let's see checking that power state that is growing so that is good and oh ah. so this is quite uh, yeah it's it's definitely quite neat and perfect, would you look at that, we also found another one of those glowing uh, enemies. So let's see whether or not we can take this guy out, he's gonna drop another one of those runes. And we're just gonna pick that up, just like that. Oh, that guy is quite hit, hard to hit for whatever reason, there we go though. This guy too. There, so um, I think we've cleared off enough of floor one, so let's up the ante on this, and let's go up here to floor number two, and we'll see how we uh, how we fare down there, because I think we have enough to, to last uh, down there, though it uh, yeah, might might be slightly risky, nevertheless though. Let's jump in here, let's, uh, let's go back to that floor... Uh, Floor, floor, floor exit, or you know, stairs up slash stairs down. So um, what we can do now is that we can go down here, and what this will do is that it'll also it'll uh, it'll give us the option to select a bonus, really. So this is uh, quite neat. Um, we'll be presented with uh, like four different choices here, and we'll also have the the option to go random. I'm gonna get a shock level just simply because it's quite useful, seeing as how our primary attack, of course, comes from that shock ability. And I want to see how far we can go with this. And ooh, there is quite a nice chain of different. Um, Different destructibles here, so I think I'll try to clear all of those with like, yeah, just a wave of stuff like that. And yikes! Ooh, they have two of those glowing uh, enemies inside this room. So yeah, these uh, these rooms will definitely scale up as you go forwards of the game. I'll take that guy down. That glowing worm thing is definitely uh, quite the pest. It can go underground, as uh, as you may have noticed, so it'll dodge your attacks and it'll just pop up to attack you. Once it is, of course, really close. There we go. Give us some health. Not exactly the most useful thing, but still appreciated. And there we go. Fire rune and some other rune. And man, oh man, I could go for a triple combiner right now. That would be really, really useful. Let's see what this guy has. I think he's like some sort of a, a light or something like that, so we'll take him out, and ooh, a level up too. 
So yeah, below our health bar, there's a there's a slight level uh, experience meter. When you level up, you can select a trade, and I think it also gives you a bonus, just like clearing a floor. Um, so let's see, what can we do here? So uh, we can do underdog. Whenever we have a status effect, we gain 20% uh, armor. Um, we have damage dampening. If we're near a destructible, we we can apparently spread damage to it. So yeah, these um these traits will all of, will of course be these just in general in can unconventional ones uh let's see we can have bug exterminator apparently and what is this toughen gives a 10 percent chance on taking any damage will increase our armor by 10 percent for seven seconds i think i go with the damage dampen thing and we'll see what that is all about because i see quite a few destructibles here and that would could uh you know could come into use oh got lots of guys here as well What did we get over here? We got another one of those things. We should actually, yeah, we should probably stick closer to those uh, crates here. These guys aren't melee guys, so uh, it's a little harm in it, perhaps. And there, we got another double double condimer and a uh, and a rune there. So let's see what we can make now. Haven't found the the elusive triple one, but uh, let's see what we can do about making perhaps a fire ability. That is uh, also, yeah, some sort of a, a mind rune of force ability as well. So we're going to get Tracer over here, which is uh, shoots a Tracer that will automatically shoot a bullet to the location. Oh, I see. So that's actually quite useful. I think what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to rearrange that slightly, and I'm just going to put the, uh, the Sandstorm ability in the back. And this is how, yeah, so the first two icons over here, this will be my left mouse and this will be my right mouse. And what I believe I can do is that if I have the dexterity to it, I can move and I can use all three of these abilities as once. Now, I thought about, um, I thought about, like, because I have a four button mouse, I have the two little side buttons that um, you can, you, well, you typically use them for uh, web browsing, right? But I thought about using them for the explicit purpose of, like, just holding down all of the buttons there and firing off all four abilities as once, but unfortunately it didn't work out as I had planned, which, uh, which isn't, yeah, all that great, <laughs> unfortunately. It's worth a try, though. It's worth a try. Well, what is this all about? Apparently we, uh, I think we were burning up there. Oh, and, oh, yikes, actually, our health is quite low. Hmm. Gotta watch that. In that case, I think we'll just blow up whatever, uh, things are around here. Let's see. Yep, that goes too. And no luck with the health. So I had to be careful next turn. Well, that's fine too, because we have a special ability here that'll help us out with that. Right, so like I said, I mean, we can launch these uh, distractor orbs. And these things have the ability to keep some of the, uh, the enemies occupied for some time. I'm trying to stick next to this uh, large crate. Oh, yikes. Yeah, that's good. Got some health right there. But that wasn't working all too well. And there we go. Perfect. Two health units. So that'll give us uh, what we need. And let's see. Those things didn't have anything, unfortunately. And ooh, floor exit two. So this is actually quite the, uh, quite the room here. Let's check this. In a weakened state, your power is growing. So let's see. I think it depends on like how how difficult the room is. Uh, if it's an easy room, our abilities grow. If it's a hard room, our, our abilities decrease relative to uh, to those. Oh, ah, oh, that's right. We've. Uh... I think we've seen one of these before, but that might have been an alternative take. So, um, anyhow, these are these are mission rooms right here. These are different events that you can fire off, and typically they grant you, I believe, either a large amount of experience or just in general something. So, um, I've seen a few of these before. These typically were the ones that I've seen were more or less like escort missions in the sense that one person would follow you around, you'd have to protect them for some time. This one looks kind of neat, so it's a shrinkify. You 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 are getting a strange feeling that this is a trap. I'm not really sure if um, if there's permanent death in these, but uh, we'll see how this goes, and we'll uh, duke it out here. And would you look at that? That shrunk us down exactly. What did uh, exactly what it says? And somebody over there has some ability that uh, that makes us smash heads, where you know pulls everything to one location. So yikes! 
the narrow uh, point of view, it is really difficult to get in there. There we go. So, completed the event, we can buy a few things here, we can get some more damage, some lower cooldowns, and I think in our current state we'll get uh, some more defense. And we also got a level up from that, so we can also choose some more stuff like that. Um, so let's see, latent energy in knocks back anything that we touch, so I guess if we collect, uh, if we if we bump into like a melee guy, they get bumped back. Um, on a flawless room, we, get a, we apparently get a long-lasting buff, that might be useful if we can get flawless rooms, but I don't think we can do that. Um, or at least I can't, that's, so that's that. We can also upgrade our damage dampening thing so that we get 14% instead of, uh, I think, 7. So I think we'll go with that because it's, uh, it's the one that's the most appealing to my playstyle. And, ooh, yikes, that was not a good place to start out with. Yeah, so these things are just continuously launched, those little rat things. Really need to get rid of those things. I'm gonna use this ability once more. Hopefully that'll keep the, that uh, that big guy away. Long enough for me to grab some more health. Hopefully. Yeah, the bad thing about this ability set is, oh, would you look at that? Is unfortunately it doesn't have a ton of range. But there we go. So we got uh, we got up to room two, and let's see how many uh, how many rooms did we survive? We have survived eleven rooms. It's not bad, but of course not great. And overall, we had a yeah, pretty fun ride through this. Had a pretty high accuracy though, I've got to admit. So anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed this Let's Try. I think we'll just go back to the main menu here, check out some of the new achieve or ch check out a few of the, the new abilities that I picked up here. So um, yeah, definitely I got that uh, that sandstorm ability, that tracer ability. And um, yeah, the game will also tell us a bit about the, the creatures here. So we found a a mud golem, evidently. This guy is, uh, yeah, can hurl, hurl a slowing mud and apparently uh, leaves a, a permanent puddle that slows enemies down. So yeah, overall, pretty, uh, pretty neat creatures inside the game as well. Um, and I guess we'll just uh, leave off here. So hope you guys enjoyed the Let's Try. And of course, be sure to subscribe and like for videos similar to this one. I hope to see you guys later on. Perhaps we'll be checking out the uh, the, the master plan at that time. Bye bye till then.